Hermes Paris Experience Part 3. My name is Tanya and I'm a lover of Hermes, investor in timeless fashion and collector of handbags. Now in the first two videos I talk about my personal different experiences at different Hermes stores in Paris. I talk about how I was able to get a mini Kelly, this one in Celeste with Palladium hardware, at the flagship store FSH on Saint Honoré Street in Paris. I did not have an appointment and I was able to secure this prized possession. Let's call it what it is, shall we? Then I talk about how I was almost able to get an appointment at Sabres store, which is another store of Hermes in Paris across the river from FSH and the only reason why I did not take this appointment because I was offered one the day that I was leaving Paris and I was not willing to change my flight. Both stories are great stories if you are going to Paris and if you are planning on trying to buy an Hermes bag in Paris. So these are amazing videos to watch to get more experience. In this video I'm actually going to be talking about the time that I did have an appointment at another store which is the third and final store that Hermes has in Paris. It's George Sink, George 5 or George B, however you want to call it, it's the same store. Let me back off a little. In early September and I was in Europe on my 30th birthday, right? I turned 30. I was living my life, I was with my parents, I was traveling around Europe, I was randomly in Italy around Verona, just enjoying life really. Like that's how I can describe that vacation. It was such an enjoyable free vacation, good food, you name it, driving around Europe in a car, staying in all of those like super cute historic villas. Really, I was just having the time of my life. But you know me, I'm an addict. Do you see this? Do you see where all my money is? I'm like Carrie Bradshaw, who could not afford to pay for her apartment because she spent all her money in shoes. Only I spent all my money on shoes and bags. Anyways, I have an addiction, I'm aware of this. Hello, my name is Tanya and I'm an addict, Hermes addict. Moving on, I was playing the lottery in Paris and I was like, what are the odds? The odds were, you know, not in my favor, uh, for sure. Because when in the first two videos of my experiences in Hermes in Paris, I say that I was in Paris for more than 10 days and I was playing the lottery for me and my husband every single day and every single day, I got denied. I was like, what are the odds? I submit the first day for the appointment, I get denied. And then I submit the second day for an appointment and I get approved. I was honestly shocked. I couldn't believe, I remember I was at dinner with my parents and we're like having this best time, you know, we're like in one of these like super picturesque hotels in Italy, nature, food, pasta, wine. I was like on cloud nine, honestly, it was like, one one of the best vacations you know I've had and um, I get this text saying that I have to be in Paris the next day and I was like oh my god how am I gonna get to Paris because I'm literally in the middle of nowhere I was close to Verona but it was like maybe one hour drive from Verona so I started looking at flights and of course flights are so expensive like the last minute flight to go from Verona to Paris was about 1000 euros. It was a very expensive flight, it would be an expensive trip. Usually the flight tickets are so cheap within Europe, yes. I was also not traveling with any luggage, but I needed to be there by a specific time and I needed to be back as soon as possible. I was literally like in the middle of nowhere, so I could, I mean, technically I could have gone to Milan, but that would be like a three hour drive. At the time that I found out that I got an appointment, it was like 8 p.m. As you know, they usually send you the text like 7.30, 8, 8.30 p.m. All of these like uh, car rental agencies were close to where I was. It would have been like a cheaper flight, yes, but it just worked out that I needed to take a flight out of Verona and I was like thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. All dinner I was so stressed out. I'm like, should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Should I not go? You know, in all of my experience with Hermes, I never once turned to Hermes forums or the Facebook groups 
or things like that. I know that they exist, but I just choose to not spend my time there. I actually turned to the forums. I wanted to see the success rate, who was getting quarterbacks at appointments, at which stores, if I should go or should not go. You know, after when the dinner ended, it was like around 10 p.m., like, for two hours, I was reading the success rates. And and because I also have never been to the store, George 5, George Sink, George whatever B, I didn't know if I should go or not. So I was thinking about it. I think like I needed to, because there was no direct flight that would get me there in, term, in time for my appointment. So I needed to, to fly through Frankfurt with a stop. I would need to be at the airport at 4 a.m. Like when it was, 12 30 i was like oh and we were like so in the middle of nowhere that there were no taxis available overnight so i had to like call the front desk and i'm like can you send me a cup and they're like no we can't it's too short of a notice all the taxi companies are closed we'll keep trying to get you a taxi because i needed to leave at 3 a.m so at this point it's 12 30 we're like going on one i would need to leave in two hours to go to the airport to catch my flight out of verona there's no taxi and i'm like hmm should i go or should i not go like on these forums honestly it was crazy i don't know why i did this how i did this it was uh i don't know what was going through my head but i was like okay i'm gonna go also it was my 30th birthday like i mentioned and i kind of want to little gift for myself and uh well i wanted an hermes bag to be honest actually before that i was in milan and i also spent in milan overall it was around five thousand euros without a bag offer at all so i did not have like the best experience in milan fast forward it's almost 1 a.m and i was like you know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna go i'm gonna go and I was like talking to my husband and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go. So the front desk manages to get me a taxi. I don't know how they pulled it off. So I'm at the airport. I go Verona to Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Paris. I think my flight got to Paris around 8.30 in the morning or maybe 9.30. And my appointment was supposed to be at one. And I flew into Charles de Gaulle and you know, like Charles de Gaulle is like, you know it's so far and it's just the traffic is insane i didn't eat so i was like yeah i'm in paris for a day i was trying to like make the best of it i was so excited and i was like i went to a french bakery at the airport i had a cappuccino with a croissant i was like oh, that's so french you know I have that and then at around 9 30 i decide to go to my appointments to to the city of paris so i got an uber it told me that the drive would be one hour to go from charles de gaulle to this george sink george five store and then the traffic was crazy so while i'm sitting in traffic it's already like on one hour traffic one hour and a half i think it was like around 11 and my appointment time starts moving up so it's not at 1 30 because you know that hermes can change the time of the appointment at any time they started moving it up now if you have any experience with hermes appointments in paris or heard of anything or did some research you know that when they start moving up appointments, it's not a good sign. Especially move up like that. It kept changing to 12.30, 12.45, 12.30, 12. And then it was like at 11.30 and then at 11.20. So they moved it up two hours. And I was at that point, yeah, I was like going on two hours in the Uber. I was so stressed out. I was so stressed out. I was like, why did I go get a coffee? Why did I go get the croissant? Like I should have just gotten into the Uber, freaking Paris traffic. I was like so stressed out and I think it showed. I, let's say, I think my appointment new time from like 1.40 or 120, 1.30, it got pushed up to 11.15 and I was walking to the store at 11.20. So I get to the store and keep in mind, I have never been to that store. I have had experiences at FSH and I have had experiences at Severus, but never at that store. And I'm like, this store is weird. It's a very strange store. They ask for my passport. They're so nice. A sales associate comes out. She doesn't introduce herself to me. She doesn't say anything. She takes my passport and then she's like kind of rude to be honest. Like kind of very rude. She was like moving so fast and I was like that's not a good sign. I don't know. Maybe I like did not have like the best 
energies i was really worried i was also so worried that i was late i also didn't sleep the night you know like it was just like my emotions were like this she asked me what i want and i'm like i'm looking for a birkin gold on gold i would like 30 i'm willing to take a 25 not that i'm not a big fan of 25 birkin i'm also willing to take kelly 25 or a mini kelly in rouge kazakh or any other classic red like a true red maybe orangey red whatever red or at that point i was willing to consider a kelly 25 or a mini kelly in nata or cray but i said i was open you know i was open i was also telling her it's my 30th birthday i came from italy like i was with my parents living the life you know just like and she was like she did not show any emotion so she leaves and she leaves for a while she leaves for maybe like 15 20 minutes so i'm like good sign wishful thinking you know where the story is heading right like i feel like you kind of get the feeling of how i'm talking about the story even before we get to the point she returns with a bag and then with a box sorry and i'm like thank god she returned with a box and judging by the size i was like okay that's probably birkin 30 or like a 35 it was a big box and i was like oh 35 and like Ooh. I was like, ah, oh, like Birkin 30. And then she's like, well, I got something that it's not what you asked before she opened the box. It's not what you asked, but I hope that you like it. And I'm like, honestly, I was like, okay. She opens the box and it's a her bag. I'm not familiar with the sizes of her bags, but I think it was the smallest size or one of the medium size. It was not like the largest her bag, but it was a her bag in red. I asked, she's like, you mentioned you were looking for, Ke for Kelly in red. I was like, I was like, I can buy this bag online in the US. And she was like, yeah, well, we don't have any bags. Keep in mind, she doesn't even tell me her name. And I'm like, okay, is there a, like, maybe I could modify my wish? And she's like, no, but you could try for an appointment again tomorrow. Or keep trying the online lottery system. I was shocked. I was like, honestly, I was so disappointed. I was so heartbroken. And then I was like, well, maybe I can like look around the street. She's like, yeah, bye. So she was so fast like that do i think they had bags yes they did do i think they had as many bags as they usually have for quarter bags no they don't i made a mistake of going the week before the fashion week and it was also early september and we all know that in august it's very hard to get Hermes bags because they're not making them in august actually they are because they're off the Hermes artisans whatever french people they are off usually for the entire month of august so in august they have the bags to sell from july you know previous bags but in september they're very low on stock and whatever they have they're reserving for their vips or you know clients that they know or you know people for fashion week like if you only get one thing from this video don't go to paris during a fashion week unless you're somebody obviously like i mean i'm just like a mere like human being you know i'm not a celebrity i'm not like i don't have a relationship with our mass corporate if you have this does not apply to you by any means um go to paris during fashion week but as mortals i didn't put it together that it was a combination of them being off the entire month of august and and the fashion week coming i don't think they had a lot of bags now do i think that the salesperson liked me no i don't think so do i think that she tried her best to accommodate me again i don't think so i could be wrong but i'm usually right at reading people do i think that they had what i was looking for i do think that they did like you know like they usually do but it was just the stars were not in my favor i was not that lucky even though i was able to buy a mini kelly just like four months before and if you ask me well this is a second quarterback no this one was under my husband's name i was trying because i got an appointment obviously under my name and i did not have quarterback purchase in paris now i did have purchase history in paris not at that store obviously not with that sales associate but i did have purchase history before you ask me i did have purchase history under my name in paris 
I guess I was just very unlucky and this person was not very friendly. I decided that the very least I could do is try to visit my friends at FSH and at Sabres because I still had some time before my flight back to Paris, sorry, to Italy. So I left very disappointed, heartbroken, almost crying. Like I was very sad to be honest. And when I was in the cow, I started checking that forum for Hermes bags again. And they were like, oh yes, don't go because you know, it's, they were not making any bags in August and like all of these things. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I started getting those replies after I'm already in Paris, after I've already been rejected from my appointment. I did share with the community that that's what happened to me. So, you know, people are aware. I went to FSH. I took a taxi from George Sink to FSH. I did find a friend of my sales associate. He's just like a truly amazing person. He recognized me. He's like, of course, I remember you. Uh, you know, it was like a very warm welcome. We were talking for like 15 or 20 minutes. I did not buy anything. And then he, I was like, is there any way to get a bag for my birth? And he's like, no. He was saying that there's like some people who spent an abnormal amount of money from certain countries uh, that were sitting there waiting for a manager's approval to get a bag. So I think that they were all sort of the overall consensus that I got, at least from my friends who I have had a relationship with from her mess before, was that everybody was low on bags. He's like, yeah. I already exhausted my like one wish for the day. He did not say those words specifically, but this is kind of like what I understood that he was trying for his other clients that have spent a bunch of money. And I was like, okay, well, it was great seeing you. You know, it was, I was actually like, very happy to see him. I was like showing him some photos. It felt very nice. But you know me, I don't give up easy. And I was like, I'm in Paris, I'm gonna go to Sebrest. So I go to Sebrest and I ask, for my sales associate who was the person that I was talking to in my second video of my RMS experiences in Paris. He was just so sweet. He was also off the whole month of August and he just got back to the store. I think it was like his first day back or something like that. Like I kept him like that. It was crazy. And I like ran into him randomly at the store. I was like, do you remember me? And he was like, of course I remember you. So we were like chatting and I was like, is there a chance for a bag? It was my birthday and things like that. And he was like, honestly, he was like, the shelves are empty. And then he was like, I was shocked. I came back to work today and I was shocked to see the Stockholm so empty. Now, do I think that they had obviously a few boxes reserved? I think that they always do. I think that regardless of the store, they always have something, especially he was like, you had an appointment at George Sink. And I was like, yeah, both of uh, my sales associates from FSH and Sofres are like, you had an appointment at George Sink. They're like, we cannot help you today because I think the systems, if I have an appointment at another store, they could not, like, even if they wanted to, I think it's going to be very difficult for me to be given a quota bag at another store. If you have any insight on that, please comment because I would like to know that because they were like just saying those things. So this was my third and final experience at Hermes in Paris. Now I still have phone numbers of my sales associate who gave me this beautiful mini Kelly. I occasionally text. I have gotten some shipments like I got this Paris exclusive cheaper sandal. You know, that was the time that everybody was going crazy over cheaper sandal. It was summer of last year and they were just not available anywhere. I mean, I still was able to get a pair here in the US uh, quite easily actually. And then I also got the Paris exclusive from Paris. My sales associate was kind enough to ship, but I don't know, honestly, like after that time, I have been kind of disappointed with my shopping experience the, sorry, not shopping, but appointment experience. And just in general, you know, FSH and Severus and George five sync whatever they can be quite difficult to shop at even though you are getting a great saving on a bag you know european prices are you know if you get a tax free they're pretty much half or like 40 percent less expensive than in the us which is a big saving i think overall for me it's a little too stressful if i'm being honest not knowing what you'll get taking flights uh, spending money there the emotion whoops my hair 
not knowing what you're gonna get like of course it's a thrill but it's just like i don't think it's the risk that i'm personally willing to take if i had a great relationship that i don't know i would spend five ten thousand dollars and sorry euros and they would give me a bag for sure guaranteed i would definitely go more it's just like such a hit or miss and a lot depends on your luck i'm just not sure that i want to play that game and to spend time because honestly like the thing that i regretted the most about that paris experience is not that i was denied the bag it's not even the money that the ticket cost all of those things like sort of like it's almost like a coin into my hermes experience uh, and I just like put that coin into the piggy bank that I share with all of you and you know I'm kind of like the guinea pig why am I talking about pigs piggy bank guinea pig anyways too many pigs I knew that it was not like such a waste but what I really really regret is wasting my time the precious time that I had with my parents it was such a difficult year for me and my family last year it was the most difficult year that I have ever had with my family my family has ever had like on so many different levels that that trip like every single moment of that trip with them together felt like such precious time such precious seconds such precious precious time that now looking back at it it's the lost time that I mourn over the most and that's what like was the most painful thing for me the lost time with my parents I don't see my parents that often they live in another country so it's it was just a very difficult pill to swallow and I'm just not sure if I try again now if I go to Paris for fun if I go to Paris for whatever other reason I will definitely try you know me I always try but Am I gonna go to Paris without having an appointment or not knowing if I'll get a bag to get a bag? Absolutely not. Anyways, I hope that you learned a lot from my experiences. I try to be as open as I can and as honest as I can so you learn from me and expand your Hermes knowledge. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. I am going to be talking in my next video about Birkin bait, what's worth it and what's not worth it. And always follow me on Instagram. You can ask me for advice there I am always very willing to help